So I have not been this excited for a group set release in a long time. In fact, the last time I was anywhere near this excited may have been when GRX was first released back in 2019. In this video, a close look at the brand new budget gravel group set from Microshift that promises to offer the average everyday gravel grinder with a simple, functional, mechanical, and affordable alternative to Shimano and SRAM. So starting at the top, there are two distinct configurations of the sword group set. The one by system is centered around the G7005M rear derailleur, and the right hand shifter is shared between the one by and two by configurations, but for the one by setup, there are two options for the left lever, a simple brake lever, as well as a dropper post remote lever. And just to be clear, the dropper post remote, which only has one momentary paddle for actuating a dropper, is in fact different from the two by left lever, which has traditional levers for shifting up and down the chain rings. The one by rear derailleur can shift a 10 speed 11 to 48 tooth cassette and Microshift now offers two versions of this cassette. The older steel version and an updated alloy version which is significantly lighter. Now the cranks are the same for both configurations but in the one by setup Microshift offers a 40 tooth or a 42 tooth narrow wide chain ring. And then in the two by variety the longer caged rear derailleur accepts an 11 to 38 tooth cassette. The simple front derailleur shifts between the chain rings on two different gearing options, an already subcompact 4831 and a sub subcompact 4629 tooth chain set for some seriously low gears. So that's kind of the system architecture, if you will. Now I've been testing the one by non dropper post configuration for the last few days. So I can't speak to the front shifting or the dropper post functionality, but there are still some major talking points nonetheless. Now, starting with the biggest change in my opinion, the brifter design. Now the whole sword group set is clearly modeled after Shimano GRX, and this is perhaps most clearly evidenced by the new brifters. They feel great in the hand and they're such an improvement over the older Advent X brifters, which were rather bulbous and to be honest, not that comfortable. Now the sword hoods are textured, which adds some functional grip for a nice tactile feel and the lever blades themselves are actually coated and they too have a little bit of texture to them. Now to be clear they don't have the same sort of rubberized coating like the GRX levers but rather more like a textured metal finish. Now functionally I think it works great and given my history with GRX lever coatings failing, I'd actually say that it's a welcome feature. Another big change is that the new sword brifters run the shifter housing internally for a nice clean look. Now this is in contrast to the older Advent X brifters, which ran the housing externally. Now it is a rather subtle thing to note, but this means that you do lose the barrel adjuster at the shifter, which is why the new sword derailleurs feature a barrel adjuster, whereas the older Advent X derailleurs did not. Now this also means that if you plan to use the new brifters with the older Advent X rear derailleur, you will need to install an inline barrel adjuster to give you fine control over the cable tension. It's really not a big deal though, these cost a couple bucks and they install really easily. So the next sort of most impactful change on the sword group is again a result of the updated brifter design. Now the brake lever pivot point has been relocated a little bit higher which gives the user so much more leverage from the hoods than the previous version. Now on the Poseidon X Ambition, I swapped the Advent X brifters to the sword brifters and left everything else stock. And yet I could immediately and easily lock up the rear brakes from the hoods, which truthfully was nearly impossible before. Braking power is noticeably increased, which definitely made me more confident on the descents. Now I think the sword brifters in combination with some high quality compressionless brake housing and maybe a slick inner cable would honestly start to rival the braking power of some higher end mechanical disc brakes, or at least close the gap a little bit. So the brifter design and consequently the major improvement in braking performance are by far the things that stood out to me the most with this new group set, but I should definitely mention the new rear derailleur design as well as the new crank offering. So the sword rear derailleur has been redesigned but functionally, I would say that it's on par with the Advent X. The shift quality on both derailleurs is really good. And honestly, I would say that it's pretty hard to improve the performance of the Advent X derailleur 
that much more. I would describe the sword rear derailleur as just a more refined version of the Advent X derailleur. The clutch switch is this nice looking knob rather than the on off switch that the Advent X derailleur has. And the actual design of the derailleur has been updated as well. Now one of the cool things about the sword derailleur is that you can supposedly swap the cages of the two different versions of the rear derailleur. Now what this means is that you can have it set up for a wide range one by setup, but then you can actually convert it to a two by without having to buy a whole new derailleur. Now Microshift claims that it's only three screws to swap the cage, but that doesn't account for swapping the jockey wheels and potentially needing a different size chain when converting. Now one other thing to mention is that the Advent X group set didn't actually offer a crank set, but the new sword group set does. And not surprisingly, the B CD matches that of Shimano's GRX cranks, which is that asymmetrical 4x110 BCD. Now, Russ did a first look on these cranks, and he noted that even though the BCD was the same as the GRX crank, the chainring tabs were machined in such a way that a chainring for a GRX crank wouldn't actually fit the sword crank. However, he has since confirmed with Microshift that this was likely just a pre-production machining error and that the final version of the sword cranks will be compatible with chain rings designed for the GRX crank. As far as crank lengths, they'll come in 165, 170, 172.5, and 175 millimeter lengths, which should suit a wide range of leg lengths. So as far as my actual ride impressions of this new group set, I am very impressed. On paper, Microshift is offering a group set that seems to be backstepping from the current movement toward electronic shifting and hydraulic brakes. The purely mechanical sword group set is refined and it works really well. I'd say that my only gripe with it may be just the slightly awkward shifter paddle positions. Now the paddle to go into a harder gear is really high up on the shifter and it requires you to kind of curl your finger inward a bit and almost push it with your fingertip, whereas the lower paddle has a more traditional sweeping feel to the shift. It's a really small complaint, and to be honest, I got used to it by the end of my first ride, but it's just something to know. Now, there is also this pretty big gap between the upper and lower shift paddles, which does seem kind of strange at first. However, upon closer inspection, it actually makes sense why they did it this way, and it's because the upper and lower paddles don't pivot at the same point, which means as you pull the brake lever toward the handlebar, they sweep through different paths, and this gap between the paddles prevents them from contacting each other during braking. Now, I've only been able to test this group set because the nice guys over at Poseidon Bike lent it to me, but it does seem that perhaps they are testing the group set to see if it would be appropriate for the Poseidon bike lineup, which conceivably means that future Poseidon drop bar bikes are going to eventually get the sword group set, which would be really awesome. And I'm gonna predict that we will start seeing the sword group set on Poseidon bikes and similar budget gravel bikes over the next year or so. And that's a really good thing. Now I'm not affiliated with Microshift, and so I truly don't have any idea when this group will officially be launched, or how much it'll cost. Now, if I had to guess, I would say that the Advent X components may stay at around the same price point, if not drop just slightly. And then the sword groups that will likely be offered as a premium option, certainly costing a little bit more, but hopefully not by too much. Now, as far as the weights of the components, it wasn't really on my mind, so honestly, I just forgot to weigh everything. And truthfully, I was more curious about the performance and the design updates than anything else. Now, I can say that nothing stood out as particularly heavy. Everything seemed to be on par with the older Advent X stuff, except the alloy cassette. That definitely felt significantly lighter than the steel version, which was nice. So what can I say? Microshift Sword, I'm a huge fan. Now, partly because of just how well it works and how much of an improvement it is over the Advent X system, but I also just appreciate that a company like Microshift exists. Now, specifically, they're not chasing the elite of the elite, they aren't concerned with developing the newest tech, they have nothing electronic or hydraulic. And they really doubled down on this idea that there are a whole lot of people who just want a functional mechanical group set that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Now I realize I'm really starting to sound like a salesperson for Microshift, and I totally get that. But before you go typing in the comments that this just sounds like an advertisement, again, I just wanna reiterate that I'm not affiliated with Microshift, nor is this any type of sponsored video. I'm just legitimately a fan of this new budget group set. So yeah, that's it. Thanks again for watching and thanks for subscribing to this channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.